Hey, Reckoners, and welcome back. Today's indie game is Tusks, the Orc Dating Sim. I don't do a ton of dating simulation games, partly because they, by and large, fall into the category of highly repetitive, and that's just not my cup of tea. Not to disparage the kind of games, I do play a fair number of games with repetition, but, um, it's a certain kind of doing the same thing. Like, I don't play Telltale games over again just to see the different, different, um, arcs. And that's, and that's kind of where this falls. Anyway, I thought I would do this one. One, because I quite like orcs quite a bit. They, um, possibly my second favorite mainstreamish fantasy race after dwarves, of course. Um, and you guys seem to like a uh, hot date. So we're gonna do this one. This is a completely cold LP. Don't want to spoil the surprise date, you know. I think this one is more uh, loyal to the dating sim than hot date was. Throughout this game, you can left click the screen or press enter key to move through text. You can use the page down or page up keys to scroll backwards or forwards through text. You change your presence, blah, blah, blah. That's fine. Let's enable adult content. I'm sure this won't bite me in the button anyway. We'll fix it in post. Autonomy? I thought it said anatomy for a second there. Tusk also includes an optional NPC autonomy feature where other characters can make decisions on their own that may sometimes overrule a construct of yours. That sounds interesting. Let's try it. Okay. So the premise is you're an orc in a band of orcs. I don't know if there's any females in the bunch. Let's see, so, every year, as the rush of green heralds spring, the orcs of the kingdom Alba begin their pilgrimage. They walk from the cities, emerge from the woods, rise out from the sea, and climb out from deep underground to travel to a place in the borderlands of Alba, a forested glade called the Green. Yeah, it's very green. With their arrival, the green is transformed. The trees glow with the light of hundreds of lanterns. Fire pits are prepared for great feasts. A nearby hot spring becomes a communal bath, and old ruins in the woods become temporary shelter for the orcish folk. This great orcish assembly is called the Ua. Ue? Ua? The Ua is a chance for orcs to celebrate together, to laugh, to eat and drink with one another, and to share stories. It is a chance to settle grievances with forgiveness or fighting, to mourn the passing of revered figures, and to forge new relationships, new families, and new ways of life. It is a chance to come together as a united front, as one diverse people, if only for a few nights each year. It's the final day of the Ua, and many of the orcs are preparing to leave to begin the next year of their lives. Many leave in different groups, to the one they arrived with. You, you've been looking for a group that's heading south, to the highlands of Alba that you can accompany, and you've found what looks like a suitable group of orcs preparing to leave soon. All you have to do is convince them to take you. Okay, so we have, we have Roar. All right. Yeah. Hmm. He's he's kind of he's kind of weather. Let's go. All right. So you're interested in heading up north. I'm traveling with a group of men headed by myself and my husbands. We're making our way to the northernmost point of Alba. We're happy to take any man interested in like company, and I'm sure we could take one more. But well, it depends. What was it you said your name was? Uh. Yeah. We'll we'll keep this. I believe this. Um. Game has a very a reasonably sophisticated uh random like Greek orc name generator. So we're gonna go with Greekian Greek Grecian Greek Grecian. Yeah, we'll leave that. It's a cool name. I mean I like Fohamner, but Fohamner's my dwarf name, you know, I gotta keep keep with the new 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 orc name. So my name is Grecian Greek Grecian. Pleasure to meet you, Grecian. My name is Roar. Well, I'd like to know who's coming with me on these trips before I make any decisions, so what I'm going to do is have a quick word with a few folk here who might have heard of you. If the word on you is good, then you can come with. If not, well, it depends on what you've been up to. Everyone's got a past, after all. In the meantime, why not have a chat with some of the folk in our group over there? You can get to know some of the people you might be traveling with, see if you're a good fit. Roar motions to a cluster of orcs near the edge of the clearing, sitting together and chatting with one another. I'll be back to speak with you in a few moments. 
You walk over to their group. There are six of them in total, all sitting at a circle of small boulders in the shade of the trees. There are two large, heavily built orcs who appear to be in deep conversation at the center of the group. A pair sitting beside one another in the grass, looking over the rest of the group in silence. Ooh, the traditional, more porcine orc. And another two, an orc and a boar-like grease, ah, or grise, not an orc, who seem to be intermittently listening to the two orcs who are speaking and whispering between themselves. The orcs look up as you approach, and one of them addresses you. Hello there. Yeah, we'll, go, we'll go boring old man voice. Hello there. Did, did Roar send you over? My name's Zenedig. I'm one of the clan chiefs governing this group here. What's your name? I'm Grishan. Gr 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 <laughs> nice to meet you, Grishan. Come and join us. Pull up a boulder. We'll be leaving the green shortly, just as soon as Roar's convinced we've got everything we need. He likes to be thorough. Everyone, this is Grish Grishan. He might be joining us on the road. Oh my, Ferdag. How's it going, Grishan? Had a good time with the Uwa? My name's Ferdag, by the way. Hey, pleasure to meet you, Grishan. I'm Sithig. You can sit in with the rest of the group while you wait for Roar to return. Let's, um... Let's go with Sendig. I like Sendig because he wears a kilt and kilts are awesome. You head over to one of the boulders beside Sendig and sit down on it. It's distinctly uncomfortable. There's plenty of room over here, even if the rocks do jag into your backside. It's nice to have you with us, Grishan. Grishan. Even if you don't end up joining the group, you'll at least have made a handful of new friends before the Ua is over for the year. So, Grishan, tell us a little about yourself. I'm looking for... Oh, why are you heading north, if I might ask? I'm looking for... Community. Sendig gives you a broad smile. I'm so glad to hear that. If nothing else, the assembly shows the strength and value of having a community of one's own. I really am disconcerted. By the the eyes opening and closing animation, it's just his the 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 still of his eyes opening fading into place. It looks so weird. To have friends, colleagues, associates, lovers, services, goods, all for you and people like you. It may only last a few days, but it makes a lasting impression in my heart, at least. You notice Roar walking back over to the group. Thank you for waiting, Grishan. I've well I've asked around, and I've not heard anything that's given me pause. You're more than welcome to come along with us. Welcome to the group, Grishan. We're glad to have you. Roar looks around the campsite, and then to the other crowds moving through the trees and across the clearing. We should have one more coming with us. I met him earlier today and told him to meet us here, but he must have gotten lost. Have any of you talked to a man named Aid? Ah, uh, Ed. What's that plus symbol mean? That's me! Wait, wait for me! A young man bursts through the trees and clumsily stumbles over to the group. He's obviously been looking for you for some time. They say young man. I assume they mean young orc? Nope, it's man. I'm so sorry I'm late. I got confused a bit, and I found this group that I thought was yours, but then it turned out they were going over the sea, and then I tried to find you, but nobody would tell me where to go, and I met this weird guy, and he said I had to pay money to be here, but I don't have any money to be, and he said, Slow down, slow down. It's all fine. Just take a moment to breathe. The young man stops to take in a few heaving breaths. Everyone, everyone, this is Aid. Hello, everyone. Hello, Aid. A few, a few other members of the group greet the young man in a cursory fashion. Thank you for having me, everyone. Aid, Aid's here from one of the northern colleges. He's studying orcish folk, and he asked if he could come along, learning more about our way of life, that sort of thing. Brockgin, you might find... You might find you and Aid have a lot in common, being that you're both familiar with these city colleges. I quite like his blue... 
tattoos and color. Although I find his skirt to be a little on the short side. You must be ex an exceptional student if your instruction, good work voice, right? If your institution allows you to join an orcish group, the colleges typically don't allow it in case we tempt you into sin and depravity, as we are wont to do. Oh, I don't know about being exceptional. I'm just here to do my best. I'll probably have a lot of questions to ask you all later. I hope you don't mind if I seem nosy. In any case, I'm glad to be here at last. Or at least, maybe. All right, now that we're assembled, I'd like to make sure each knows the other, as well as the plan for the journey. I'm Roar. Some of you, like Ferdag, will know me from previous journeys we have made together. Others, Aid, Grishan, and the Sithig, Gorum, and Brock have only met within the last few days. I will guide the group as chieftain along with two others. Oh yeah, this is my favorite. I'm sure I'm not at all biased by the facial hair. Actually, yeah, I mean, okay, that's a little adult content, but everything else, especially these hand wraps. Nice. Big collar. Oh yeah, this is this is what I would, hair, eh, I can take it or leave it. But yeah, it looks, it looks a lot like my Renfrew costume, so I'm biased. Okay, uh, Shenig and Malgom. No, that's an excellent echo. Mal Malgom? I don't know. If you need any help during the journey, come to us and we'll do all we can. But if you ask Roar for something and don't like the answer, don't think you can come running to us. Every clan needs its clan guard to protect it, and ours is Ferdag here. Hello. Ferdag's an accomplished fighter. He's fought off evictors on orcish land, stood his ground before raiding parties, even killed a worm with a fang snapped out of his own gum. Its own gum. Uh, hang on a second. That last one isn't exactly what happened. He'll keep you safe if he ever need it. Do likewise for him. This group will be heading north through the quiet roads of Loudon Hill. We cross the Clyde to take the West Highland Way, travel through the Great Glen, walk northeast along the road from Inverness, and on to the northernmost point of Alba. From there we sail to the home of our ancestors, the Idols of Orkney. Oh, that's hilarious. I've estimated that the journey will take us a fortnight. Fourteen days. Yeah, I know a fortnight. Thanks. Depending on road conditions, unforeseen incidents, and possible changes to our path. Sithic, Kshan, Gorum, Aid, and Brockian, as travelers along the road with us, you are welcome to leave when you see fit, or accompany us all the way to our destination. The choice is yours. And with that, I think we're ready to begin our journey. Uh, I don't have a voice from Malcolm yet. There is another matter to attend before we leave. The turn of the year gives us the chance to change ourselves in accordance with our will. Granting a name of, to our collective will allow us to invoke its power. Oh, Malgorm is right. We should give a name to our group. Something like the Highland Ward Fraternity or the Tuscan Raiders. I like that one. Maybe that one's a bit violent for a group of travelers. The Roar Corps? That sounds good. Are there any suggestions which are not Distinctly terrible. I'm going to suggest a name. I think we all know what it's going to be. Choose a thematic word, such as Highland Ward, Tuscan, Warsong, or Green. Your group will be referred to by the group name, the thematic word, Collective Word. Here's the thematic word. Uh, let's go Tuscan as the thematic word. Because Tusk is quite Tusk is my favorite Fleetwood Mac song, that's why. And now a collective word to describe your group, such as blah 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 blah. Here's the collective word, which I think is the guessable word. They are the Reckoners. Or we are the Reckoners, because we wreck things. Yeah, the Tuscan Reckoners. What about the Tuscan Reckoners? <laughs> I'm not I'm, I'm not sure about it, you pansy. Oh my gosh. Uh, I don't think so. Four. Nice. That's a yes for me. I don't know. Um, uh, suits me. I can accept that. I'm afraid not. Fantastic. 
Votes in favor? Senedig, Ferdag, Gorm, Malgum, Sithig, Gleshen. Votes against Aid, Brockgen, and Roar. That's fine. I don't need any of you. And that's right. Murmurs of approval travel through the Reckoners. For a second there, I thought I had a typo and I panicked. All right, then it's decided. From now on, we're the Tuscan Reckoners. We should get a move on soon. We don't want to be one of the last groups leaving the green. Why not? Is that cleaning duty? That's true. All right, everyone. It looks like we're ready to leave. Let's get the rest of our gear and head off. He's vaguely a pirate, isn't he? I mean, my fault, of course. You join the rest of the Reckoners in getting all of your equipment together. In less than a minute, you begin marching through the forest with your newfound companions by your side. As you pass under the various festival paraphernalia and into the dense tree line, you look back and watch as the green fades from view, the vibrant atmosphere growing quieter and the sound of forest wildlife taking its place. The light surrounding the green dims as you move further through the wood, and before long it blends seamlessly into the forest atmosphere. The Uwa vanishes in a sea of green and you are no longer present within its sacred lines. An unusual nervous energy manifests throughout your body and vibrates across your senses. It is an strange sensation that's difficult to translate. There do not, there do not appear to be words for it. Well, that's a cop-out, Mr. Riderman. It takes some time for the Reckoners to navigate out from the forest, but when you finally reach the tree line, you see a road stretching off into the distance, across the rolling hills. The sun is already descending from its noontime peak, but there is still plenty of daylight left for the first stage of the journey north. Aid is striding ahead, leading the group through the hills, with the tall Selkie Gorm walking beside him. The pair seem to be engaged in conversation. Selkie. I thought Selkies were... Like, uh, this is a bad description, but think of a werewolf, only instead of a person turning into a wolf, it's a person turning into a seal. And it's not a full moon, it's kind of just at will. They're a shapeshifter, human seal shapeshifter, basically. I hazard that that is not the case in this world. And those are some really fancy nipple piercings. They remind me of like a logo, a real world logo, I think. Ah, whatever. Behind them, Clan Chieftain Sendig is making steady, measured footsteps, his cane tapping against the soil of the path underfoot. A little way in front of you, the other Clan Chief, Roar, is talking with Ferdag, the Clan Guard. You can hear snippets of their conversation. They seem to be discussing the area around you. Off to the side of the path, the Grice, Seth Sithig, and Brockgen, the scholar, are holding a conversation in hushed tones. It sounds like they're trying to discreetly talk about someone in the group. Probably aid. And far behind them, you can see Clan Chief Malgum walking at his own leisurely pace. I want to do Malgum. Aha! A little Freudian slip there. You stand in place watching the others pass you by pass you by one by one until there is only one member of the reckoners behind you. Malgum appears to have his eyes closed as he's walking. It doesn't seem like he's noticed that you're nearby. Uh let's talk to him. Uh Malgum, is everything alright? Malgum keeps his eyes closed shut, but definitely turns to avoid you. Everything's fun Grishan Grishan. Malgum opens his eyes and stops beside you. I hope you're here to offer me some company. I'd be glad of some just now. You continue walking alongside Malgum, who now keeps his eyes firmly open, taking in the sight of the hills and farms around you. Uh, what were you doing with your eyes closed? He doesn't seem at all phased by the question. I was taken in my surroundings. I find it difficult to do that fully when you're bedazzled by color, shape, light, and brightness. I've been here in this very area so many times in my life. It's an important place to me, so I like to try to preserve parts of it in my mind every time I visit. Visible details are important, of course, but have you ever smelled a scent that instantly brings you back a long-forgotten sensation? Not a visual memory, but a feeling like you instantly traveled into the past and were thrust back in a split second. Hi, and have you noticed how difficult 
It can be to visualize or remember where you'd first experienced that sensation, like you had traveled to a place you couldn't discern because you were blindfolded. That's what I'm trying to preserve for myself. When I'm transported back to these places in my memory, I want to be able to know exactly where I am, where I was using all of my senses. This world isn't just an empty bottle with pretty hills and farmhouses painted onto it. After all, the bottle is full. We are suspended in the heady wine of time with scent, with gentle ripples and vibrations, with taste and weight and pressure. I fear I may have lost you somewhat. No, I understand what, I understand what you mean. I mean, you're a little... You definitely were waxing pretty strongly poetic, but I get... I get it. Ah, I'm glad to hear that. Perhaps you'd like to take part in a demonstration so you can experience it for yourself. Malgum tilts his head to one side as he walks, staring out over the horizon. I have an idea. Keep walking, but close your eyes. Humor me. All right, do you have your eyes closed completely? What I want you to do is just keep walking and I want you to widen all of your senses as much as possible. Even your eyesight, I want you to try to see through the darkness around you. Ready? Malgum falls quiet. At first, all you hear is the regular rhythm of your steps along the dirt road, but you quickly detect Malgum's footsteps too. Accompanied by a hypnotic swoosh sound, you realize for the first time that he has been walking through the grass beside you. Other sensations make themselves known. Lights flicker against your eyelids like beams of sunlight through foliage. The sound of aid and Gorm's earnest laughter all the way from the front of the group. But there is nothing underneath it all. But there is something underneath it all. The heaving cycle of breathing without breath. The low roar of war without combatants. The bitter taste of something necessary absent. Blood without a body. Poof. You quickly open your eyes, and the sight of the world crashes back in like a tidal wave. Ha, ah, you felt it. How did that happen? One minute I was sensing things around me, and then it was something else. It is difficult to say. You recall I mentioned that we are suspended in time, like wine in a bottle. What you saw was a result of this. Time is not a river, it is a current, and movement, not the thing that moves. The wine in the bottle swirls in spirals and moves faster as it approaches the center. People like us have always been adept at seeing and moving through the current, no matter where it pulls us. Suffice it to say, Ua is more than just the name we give to the event of our people being brought together in a given time and place. It is all gatherings of our people. It's not helpful to dwell on this, though. We're starting a new journey together. The past and the future can wait for us. I just noticed he has a Gorham crucifix on his arm. Is Christianity a thing in this world? Because that's crazy. Maybe it means something else. I don't know. You and Malgum continue along the road together, taking turns to close your eyes and describe your surroundings to one another. You quickly learn to notice subtle changes in your environment, the heat and light from the sun, even slight changes in tones in the murmur of nearby conversations. The odd thing you experience does not rear its head again. Before long, the forest where the Ua took place is no longer visible. The hills that make up the Shire have swallowed them at your back. As you continue along the road across the Shire with the rest of the Reckoners, you pass alongside a number of human settlements and farmsteads dotting across the hills. Most of the people working the fields or walking the road nearby seem content to let you pass with nothing more than a quick glance cast your way, their interest satisfied in the flash of a second's passing. You realize most of the people here are likely accustomed to seeing orcs come and go from the Ua each year. But even still, you sense a kind of unspoken uneasiness. Although there is nothing overt in their mannerisms, you can't help but get the feeling they are purposely turning their gazes away from you a split second sooner than is natural. Maybe because you're pretty naked. An acknowledgement of your presence by deliberate lack of acknowledgement. It's not clear exactly what this means. The members of the Reckoners spend the remaining few hours of the trip marching alongside or behind one another. Although spirits are high and everyone is eager to make headway on the trip, the group begins to slow, takes longer to recover during brief rests, and the sun falls closer and closer to the western horizon. Alright everyone, I think it's time we stopped and set up camp. 
We've made very good progress today, so thank you to each of you. You deserve a break. Nearby is a glade where the waters meet outside the village of Elvenfoot that is oft used by orcish travelers. If we settle down there, we can set up our tents before sundown. With that, you and your companions depart for the main road and navigate down into the valley. A small settlement can be seen a short way in the distance. The Reckoner settled down in a small glade amongst nearby trees, sheltered by a low hill. Each member of the group begins to unpack the furs and fabrics they carry with them, hanging them over tree branches and loose wood to create tents and coverings. It doesn't take long, but by the time the members of the Reckoners are done, the sun has set and the only light comes from the campfire and flickering lanterns. All right, is everyone set up? I'll need two people to go on duty each night so we can gather some supplies. We need basic things like food, firewood, water, and so on, but we should also keep an eye out for herbs and mushrooms for medicine, or wood and materials for repairing tents and carrying equipment, that sort of thing. Gugorum Brockian, I'll take you two to head. I'd like you two to head out for tonight. Come with me and I'll let you know what we're looking for. Gugorum and Brockian are out on duty. All is quiet in the camp tonight. Let's see. Let's spend time with Mal- Oh, Sendig and Malgum, my two favorite people. I wonder what happens if I just chose the loner at this entire game. That'd be interesting. You head over to the large tent that Sendig, Roar, and Malgum all share. You find Sendig sitting cross-legged on a rug in front of the chief's tent with Malgum and Roar nearby, attending to some of the camp furnishings. Sendik looks up as you approach and waves at you to approach. Good evening, Grishan, Grishan, Grishan. Sendig leans back to call over to the other chiefs. Malgum, Roar, Grishin is here to see us. Hello, Grishan. It's good to see you. Evening, Grishan. The pair of them have been busying themselves for most of the night. I'll make sure next time you come around they'll stop fussing and spare some time for you to see how you're settling in and all that. So how can I help you, Grishin? Grishin? Um, I've come to chat with you, old timer. Oh, that's very kind of you, Grish Grishin. Grishin, Grishin. It's always nice to travel with someone who doesn't mind a wee blether. Take a seat so I don't crick my neck from talking up at you. Sendig motions to an empty space in the rug beside him, which you accept. Sendig takes a moment to look out over the camp, and you do likewise. From this point, you can see all the other tents in the camp with other members of the Reckoners either inside or nearby. It's funny. Sendig doesn't take his eyes off the camp, but gives a little nod over to the tents. Every year, we all come together at the Ua. It's only for a few days and nights, then we leave. But the communities we leave in at the end of the Ua are a miniature version of what took place on the green. We think of the Ua as being the most important time of year, even though the communities we travel in are often more personal and less fleeting. And yet we rarely celebrate them for themselves. We probably wouldn't think to celebrate the Reckoners. Why do you think that is, Grishin? 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 Um... We celebrate the Ua because it's a temporary release in everyday life? No. Um. I'll go with the first one. We celebrate the Ua because it's something all our communities can share. Sendig looks away for a moment, closing his eyes in thought before giving you a small nod. You may be right. Naturally, something the scale of Ua would be difficult to achieve if we were solely committed to celebrating those exactly like us. So the Ua is communal. Some people may not have a community that supports them, so celebrating all of our kind in a more abstract sense is preferable. Some others may not have found their people yet, and feel disconnected as a result. That the Ua is a bond that reminds them that they belong, by virtue of who they are. Yes, the Ua is something that all our communities can share. Sending pauses for a few moments, and the air between you seems to grow stiller by the second. Earlier today, after we'd... Earlier today, after we'd left the green, I made a commitment to myself not to start this journey by looking back to the past. But many of the things that are now behind me lie ahead of you and the rest of your generation. And I feel like I should pass the knowledge of those things on to you, so you can celebrate our victories and avoid our mistakes. 
and so that our communities can grow and flourish while I'm still here to enjoy them. That is how a lineage like ours of men that love men and women that love women continue to survive and thrive, even though our generations are not always linked by blood. Sending looks out once again over the camp of the Reckoners. You sense a feeling of contentment from him. The two of you sit in silence for a little while, soaking up the ambience from the camp below. Thank you for talking with me, Grishian, Grishian, Grishian. Your company is just what I needed tonight. But it's late, and I fear if I keep you up too long, you'll have no energy for the walk tomorrow. I'll let you get some sleep for now. But I love to talk to you again. I have a lifetime of things to share, and I'd enjoy having your insights again. My insights. And I'll see to it that Rohor and Malga make some time for you when next we sit down, too. Sleep well, Grishin. Sendig gets up from the rug and ducks down into his tent. You say goodnight to Malga and Rohor and head back to your own tent. Within moments, you're underneath your blankets and furs, and you settle in for the first night as a member of the Reckoners. Thank you for playing the first day of Tusks the Orcadian Sim. If you enjoyed playing Tusks, please consider funding the game's development at Patreon. Link there. You can also find out more about the game's development and report any bugs via blee 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 blee. Cool. Well, I was actually hoping for a little bit more closure there, but this does give me a perfect tantalizing taste, and I just realized what the background for this menu was. So, yeah. If you're into gay orc sex, this is probably a dream come true for you. Um, if not, I don't know. I'm curious what you guys think about this game. So leave a comment to discuss, um, you connoisseurs of dating sims. Um, as always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye. <laughs>